simple. Before moving to the drugs, let us check out the coagulation cascade first. So in the coagulation cascade, we all know there are three pathways. In the center, we have the common pathway. On the left, we have the intrinsic pathway. And on the right, we have the extrinsic pathway. So first, the common pathway. I will give you an example. So in any type of sports, be it football, cricket, hockey, we know that there is a player number 10. This is the best player in the team and this player always remains in the center of the field. So similarly, factor 10 will remain in the center of the coagulation pathway and will remain in the common pathway. So we have factor 10 which is activated to factor 10A. Letter A means activated and this activation of factor 10A occurs by members of the intrinsic pathway and the members of the extrinsic pathway. So let us see how. Beginning with the intrinsic pathway first. So intrinsic means inside. So in this pathway, there is injury to the blood vessel and collagen is exposed to the circulating collateral clotting factors. The blood vessel is not widely broken and there is no tissue damage. So once the contact with collagen occurs, what happens? Factor 12 gets activated to factor 12A. Factor 12A activates factor 11 to factor 11A. Factor 11A activates factor 9 to factor 9A. Finally, factor 9A converges on the common pathway and activates factor 10 to factor 10A. So do you see a pattern here? Yes, there is a decrease from number 12, then number 11, then number 9. Number 10 is missing. We have already talked about that number 10 has gone to the common pathway in the center. So there is 12 and 11 and 9. Now coming to the extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic means outside. So there will be contact with something outside the blood vessel wall. This will be a tissue contact. So contact with tissue factor or contact with tissue thromboplastin occurs. And once this occurs, circulating factor 7 gets activated to factor 7A. Factor 7A converges on the common pathway and activates factor 10 to factor 10A. So this extrinsic pathway is a relatively shorter pathway. Now factor activated factor 10A activates prothrombin, which is factor 2, to thrombin, which is factor 2A. And thrombin in turn converts fibrinogen to insoluble fibrin and then the clotting occurs. So looking at and knowing these clotting factors, coagulation cascade, now let us move at the drugs. So in the anticoagulant drugs, we have two groups. One is oral. The other is parenteral. In the oral group, we have three broad categories, the vitamin K inhibitors, the factor 10A inhibitors, and factor 2A or direct thrombin inhibitors. In parenteral, we have two categories. Both are thrombin inhibitors. One is indirect thrombin inhibitor, and the other is direct thrombin inhibitors. Now let us check out the drugs in each category. Starting with the oral drugs, the vitamin K inhibitors include Comarin derivatives such as warfarin, dicomerol, acinocomarin, and phenindion. Next are factor 10A inhibitors. The drugs in this category include rivaroxaban and apixaban. So do you see something here, something unique? Yes, uh, the factor 10A inhibitors have XA in their names. So whenever you see XA in the name of the drug, immediately put them under factor 10A inhibitors. So another way of remembering specifically rivaroxaban is look at the letters. R, I, V, A, R reflex reversible. O reflex oral. X, A reflex 10A. And B, A, N or ban reflex antagonize or inhibits or inhibitor. So rivaroxaban is a reversible oral X, A or factor 10A inhibitor. Next is direct thrombin inhibitors. So in this group, we have two drugs, dabigatran and zimelagatran. So you can see both these drugs ends with the letters T-R-A-N. So T-R reflects thrombin and A-N reflects antagonist. Now coming to the parenteral drugs, these are all thrombin inhibitors. Coming first to the indirect thrombin inhibitors, they are called indirect because they do not directly inhibit thrombin. In fact, they activate antithrombin 3 and then this activated antithrombin 3 inhibits thrombin. So there are three further subgroups here. 
one is unfractionated appearance the other is low molecular weight appearance and the third one is others category in unfractionated apparent we have the traditional apparent in low molecular weight apparent we have anoxa apparent and delta apparent in others categories we have fond apparent and intra apparent so again do you observe a trend uh, yes all the indirect drugs have p a r i n in their names <clears throat> so all heparins have parin in their names so whenever we get p a r i n or parin in the name of the drug these are heparins and these are indirect parenteral thrombin inhibitors moving to the last group that is parenteral direct thrombin inhibitors here we have herodin bivalerodin lepirudin and argatroban so just check this out direct thrombin inhibitors have either tr or rudin in their names tr reflects thrombin and if we also have an it is an inhibitor R U D I N rudin is a product from the Leach saliva. So if you get in a nutshell, if you get T R, they are direct T R reflex thrombin, so direct thrombin inhibitors. If you get P A R I N parin, they are indirect thrombin inhibitors. Again, in the direct category, direct thrombin inhibitors, if there is T R, if A N is also there, T R A N, it is direct thrombin oral inhibitors. If there is only T R. and an is not there immediately after tr or there is rudin they are direct parenteral thrombin inhibitors hope you like this and happy learning we will see you in the next session